will continue just without all the fans. And the Bolts will not play tonight after the NHL suspended league games. And that's just some of today's updates. 10 News This Evening starts now. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Katie McCall. And I'm Allison Croft. You probably had dozens of alerts on your phones today, right? We're going to go through all the headlines to give you the facts, not fear. And as we do that, you can text the word facts to 727-577-8550 to get the very latest confirmed information sent straight to your phone. So let's start here tonight. There are now 30 positive cases in Florida. Three do not live in Florida. Five other Floridians tested positive but are in quarantine outside the state. Right now we have crews all around the Bay Area getting you the facts. Emerald Morrow is Pete Mir, Rick Kreisman announced the race will go on. The Grand Prix will continue this weekend, but you'll have to watch it on TV. Fans will not be allowed to gather to watch that race and all race related events. Those will also be canceled. The mayor also canceled the Reggae Rise Up Music Festival at Benoit Park. And those are just some of the many events that we've been keeping an eye on for you. 10 Sports Justin Granite is live at Amelie Arena, right? Yeah, that's for sure, Justin. What a shame that all of that has to be canceled. The director of the CDC told members of Congress the cost of testing for the virus and the cost of treatment will be covered. And Courtney, you have been looking into all of that testing information here in Tampa. Yeah, and testing is going to be key in all of this. The Florida Department of Health has three labs running tests, and they say they're able to meet current demand. In Hillsborough County, they get results within 24 hours. Governor DeSantis said today the state is now buying additional test kits, 2,500. They'll be able to check on 625,000 people. Their health in Pinellas County and Hillsborough County. Students will be on spring break next week, but some parents are wondering when all those kids come back, how safe will those classrooms be? 10 News reporter Eric Glasser is getting answers. He is out there at Hillsborough County at the board. Eric? Katie, I can tell you it all. A very unique and candid response coming up for you at 6 o'clock. And we're hearing a lot of school closures in other states. All public schools in Maryland will be closed March 16th through the 27th to try to stop the spread of the virus there. In Washington state, all public and private schools in three counties near Seattle, impacting 43 school districts. And in Ohio, the state has just closed all K through 12 schools for three weeks. Massachusetts is closing schools in three counties for the next two weeks. In addition to texting the word facts, you can also text the word school to 727 5778550 we'll send you the information from each district and their plans when it comes to the virus. Yeah. All day we've seen big events announced they're canceling because All right, Candace, and in just the last half hour, Disneyland in California, not Disney World. This is Disneyland announced it will be closing its parks through the end of the month starting on Saturday. Disneyland plans to keep the resort hotels open until Monday to allow guests already there to change their plans. We checked with Disney World here in Florida earlier today, and right now they plan to remain open with additional cleaning procedures in place. One day after the president announced a travel ban, the stock market had its biggest drop since the Black Monday crash of 1987, as fears of economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic deepened. And for the second time this week, stocks sank after the opening bell, triggering a circuit breaker which pauses trading. The Dow Jones dropped nearly 10%. The Nasdaq went down 9.43%. And the S&P 500 dropped 9.51%. Right now, we have Dr. Eric Carter in studio with us. You see him right there. He's answering your questions on Facebook Live right now. Keep sending him those questions in the comments section. We're going to sit down with him coming up at 5.30. And you can continue. All right, let's take a deep breath. We know we've been giving you a lot of information over these last 20 minutes. So let's take a minute and just enjoy this beautiful beach day out there. It's not too shabby for those people out on the beach. And it's going to be even warmer as we head into the weekend. That's right, Bobby. We've got some positive news to tell people. This is well, kind of nice, right? It's going to be really nice. If yeah. you're sticking around, you know, get outdoors. You don't have to be in a lot of crowded places, but you can mm -hmm. be outside. Enjoy right, it. Right. The weather will be a little bit warmer uh, for some folks, but actually low to mid 80s. Uh, for most areas through the upcoming weekend, too. So it's going to actually be really nice. There it is. Royal Caribbean just left the port. They're headed off towards Mexico. There's a lot going on in the world right now, isn't there? Uh, oh, there too it much. Is. Yeah, it's not all negative, though. In fact, some of this is really going to make you smile. So who is ready for some good news? I think a lot of hands just went up in here. This guy, check this out, is a real hero. You have to stop what you're doing and watch this animal rescue. A cop in Australia rolls up his pants and heads straight into the water to rescue a wallaby in distress. That animal 
was struggling to stay alive. This all happened just off of Bribie Island. Queensland police tell us the officer and the Wallaby both happy and healthy. Oh, that's great. This one's going to bring a good tear to your eye. An Indiana officer's act of kindness was all caught on dash cam. Lieutenant Randy Rogers responded to a call about a suspicious person on the side of the road. Well, it turns out the man named Brian had lost his home. He was just trying to make his way to family here in Florida. It was clear that Brian was down on his luck and he was hungry, so Lieutenant Rogers bought him a double cheeseburger and helped him go over his route. Good people oh, out there, guys. There really is. are. Took a moment to check on him, make yep. sure he was okay. Got him on his way. Figured it out. Yeah. Let's go to break, but first, let's go to the beach. <sighs> Who wants to head out there tonight? That was good. The beautiful view of Clearwater Beach. Hope you're having a great evening. We're back in just a couple minutes. Got a problem? 10 Investigates can help. Contact Turn to 10. And we know you're all curious about what's going on with the coronavirus outbreak, especially after the World Health Organization declared it a pandemic. So we continue to bring you the facts. 10 Investigates' Courtney Robinson is here tonight. And Courtney, you found out how prepared hospitals really are for this. This morning, leaders from the major healthcare facilities in Tampa Bay talked about what they're doing right now. So Advent Health, Bay Care, Tampa General, they say they are ready. They have plans in place to prevent spread before a patient tests positive for COVID-19. TGH and BayCare have not had any positive cases. We wish them all a speedy recovery. As the coronavirus keeps spreading, we're getting a lot of questions about how it spreads on surfaces. So here's Jason Puckett verifying how and where it actually does. Can it spread on money from our pets, our phones? Well, it turns out the answer is yes to all of them. Our sources are the CDC, the WHO, and a few medical studies. The quick answer here is that the coronavirus can survive, at least briefly, on almost any surface. Fur, paper, metal, glass, all included. The WHO. And to keep you informed, we have Dr. Eric Carter. He's a board certified family physician and he is with Catalina right now on Facebook Live answering your questions. For your questions, again, facts, not fear. Yeah, great to get that information, so send them your questions. Yeah, the more things that you know about this, the more information you have, the better, right? So that's why, once again, Carolina just said it, but we want to remind you again, text facts. Don't call, text the word facts to 727-577-8550. We have all of this information in one place that we will send right to your phone, so you can check it out whenever yeah. you want. And we've got an in-house doctor answering them, so let's go to our doctor of weather. Uh, I <laughs> Chief meteorologist Bobby Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I've got some good weather with the disease that's statewide. And here's something to lighten the mood. This one from Clearwater, a three-year-old boy who loves police officers, got the surprise of his lifetime Aww. on his birthday. Officers with the Clearwater Police Department visited him during his party. Little Ezekiel waited outside. The group rolled in with their lights flashing. They brought him gifts, including a toy police car. <laughs> Doctors perform a first of its kind procedure to help people see. Clinicians at Oregon Health and Science University successfully performed a gene editing procedure that helped with a blindness causing gene mutation. It was the first time that human genes had ever been edited within a human body. Here's more on that groundbreaking procedure. The clinical trial called Brilliance aims to bring back vision to people born with a genetic defect in their retina. There are so many people that have been told um, that there's nothing that can be. That could eventually make it available to more patients. Changing every day, Bascom Palmer Eye Institute in Miami, Florida is one of several other academic institutions that are participating in that trial. Doctors are hoping with more research and more successful trials in vivo gene editing can help treat a much wider range of diseases. Just incredible to think about that. Head outside, temperatures in the 80s today. It is a beautiful day out there at Clearwater Beach and it's gonna be a warm weekend. Today, the Girl Scouts turns 108 years old and there's a lot more to the organization than just those delicious cookies. Yes, there is. So let's go beyond the headline and look at how the Girl Scouts were formed and some things you may not know about them. So some famous Girl Scout alums on the stage and screen include Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey, Abigail Breslin, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Dakota Fanning. That's oh, a pretty so good list. Were a you good a Girl list. Scout? I was not. I was a Girl Scout. Yes. Loved it. Love scouting. What you was your favorite part about it? 
The cookies, for sure. <laughs> of course. Do you have a the favorite cookies. cookie? Oh my gosh, any of the peanut butter ones. Right, the tag along was always yeah. a, a big seller for us. It's always a good remember them. Thin mints. Samoas, a big hit. The trefoil, so a classic. So all of them? <laughs> Is that what we're going with? When you're selling them, you know, sometimes you gotta sample the product yeah. to make sure that you can effectively persuade the customer. Absolutely. You yeah. gotta try them all to make sure that you can push the best ones. Still got them in my freezer. <laughs>